let's look at the equipment you would need first to get started. Uh, obviously, uh, we need some place to generate gases, and we do this with syringes. Syringes come wrapped in funny little wrappers, like that. We get rid of those, and they come with a blue tip on them, every syringe I've seen. These are also of no use to us. Just throw that away, too. The plungers are kind of stiff at first. You may want to loosen, loosen them up a little bit and the plungers pop out like that. The other equipment you'll need includes a little vial cap. Uh, these uh, come from vials and um, we throw away the glass part unfortunately. Just use the vial cap. And a latex uh, syringe cap. These snap or twist on the end of the syringe and they're absolutely gas tight. So they're fantastic little things. You also need some sort of a way to lubricate the diaphragm on the plunger and I just use vegetable oil. It's cheap, easy to clean up. And uh, that's basically it. We'll need a little dish uh, for measuring out our liquid reagent. We'll need a, a cup to dispose of our uh, reagents when we're done with the reaction. And then we need something like a one liter um, soda bottle in order to allow the syringe to drain. So with those simple pieces of equipment, we can generate quite a wide variety of gases. Um, I have my students start with uh, generating carbon dioxide. And we do this uh, using uh, vinegar and baking soda. So if there's any problem whatsoever, um, the students uh, have only been working with very simple chemicals that, that really couldn't cause too much damage. Okay, let's get started here. The first thing we'll do is measure out the solid reagent. Now, in the TV studio, we don't have a balance, but we want to use about 0.2 grams of the reagent. And that looks like about the right amount. Okay. And that's placed in the little vial cap. Now we need to, we're going to lower this reagent into the syringe. Uh, and then the other reagent will be pulled in through the bottom. That's how the two reagents are mixed and the gases are generated inside the syringe without allowing any of the gases to escape. That's especially important when you're generating toxic gases or smelly gases. Carbon dioxide is not such a big deal. Okay, how do we get this little reagent inside the syringe? Well, we'll lower it by flotation. And to do that, we just fill the syringe with water. I'll put my finger over the hole on the bottom. And uh, just fill the syringe with water. And you want to get it very close to the top. Otherwise, it's a little bit like dropping the little vial boat into the water from uh, too high up. It may sink. But right now, we can. It makes a funny sound. All the students make comments about that. We can allow the boat to be lowered simply by flotation. You can use a one liter uh, Florence flask or Erlenmeyer flask, I suppose, uh, but this works pretty well um, and is certainly more available and cheaper. Okay, now we want to put it, the plunger in, but uh, we'll need to first lubricate the diaphragm with some vegetable oil. And I just use a few drops just in the groove of the diaphragm. And again, the pop bottle or flask will help us because um, there's a little catch on the top of the barrel and this plastic part of the uh, plunger has to get past that catch. So you'll, as I'm starting to push it in, you'll see, you'll hear anyway, us going past it right there. 
Okay, without the aid of the bottle, the uh, little vial cap with the solid chemical in it would shake, and, and some of the chemical may shake out. If that happens, then you pretty much have to start over. Okay, so now the solid reagent is in the syringe. And uh, you can actually set that down. It won't come out. The uh, diaphragm is, is, or the, is, yes, the diaphragm is stuck inside the little cap. And we're ready for the next part. Incidentally, this is the reagent that's normally the limiting reagent. And the liquid reagent, in this case vinegar, uh, will be the reagent in excess. So we can use more or less as much as we want of it. I'll um, fill this little weighing boat with the vinegar. Set it down. And uh, set the latex uh, cap nearby because what I'm going to do is suction up about five milliliters of the vinegar and then just shove the cap on. Oops, got ahead of myself. Okay. Since it's the reagent in excess, we don't have to be too careful here, but about five, four or five mils is fine. Um, don't get any air in. I'll push the cap on. These caps are also threaded, so uh, you can turn it on, but it shoves on pretty easily. Now we're ready to start the reaction. This is the exciting part. All I have to do is shake the syringe slightly to start generating the gas. and the plunger moves up the barrel. Now we need to start thinking about stopping the collection of gas, especially if we use too much of the sodium bicarbonate. Um, to stop the reaction, once we've collected 60 mils or so, we simply take the latex cap off the top of the syringe. Now, we want to have the syringe pointed upward so when the cap comes off, we don't spray the chemicals on our hands. It's not so bad with vinegar and baking soda, but later on when you're using hydrochloric acid or a reagent like that, you certainly don't want that on your fingers. So the reagents will be discharged into a beaker or a plastic cup in this case. And uh, all set, here we go. We've collected about 60 milliliters. The cap is upward. I'll take the cap off and discharge the reagents downward into the cup. Sometimes the little vial cap inside is, lands on its feet and it, there's water or solutions trapped inside of it. Just shake it a few times and that comes out too. You won't get every last drop out uh, and you don't want to discharge any of your gas. So uh, after it looks pretty good, then put the cap back on. Um, so now we have a tube of carbon dioxide that in theory we could start doing experiments with. Uh, let's, um, but before we do, it would be nice to get rid of some of these reagents that are sticking to the sides of the syringe because this contains acid and baking soda, and if we were gonna do an experiment that required us, or that tested the acidity of carbon dioxide, well, we couldn't have this acid in there. So we'll do a procedure called washing the gases. Very simple. Uh, we'll use a, a clean cup and some more water. And uh, simply, Pull five or ten whoop, mils of water up into the syringe, cap it, and shake it up a little bit. That cleans off and dilutes any reagents that are in there, and then discharge that water. Some gases can't be washed because they're water soluble, but those that that are not water soluble are conveniently cleaned in this way. 
now we have a, a syringe full of carbon dioxide that can be used for a number of different experiments. Uh, next, we'll talk about transferring gases.